second half. Who's excited? All right, this is good. So, um, yeah, who who came here on a date tonight? All right, we can, we got all kinds of dating machines in here. Who came with your bros? Cause you couldn't get a date. Yeah, these guys right here. Yeah. Who came just cause you like laughing out loud? Like, that should be everyone, right? All right, cool. So, uh, friend zone, eh? Oh man. So I don't I don't have so much of a friend zone story because I just creep girls out and then they avoid me for the rest of their lives. Um, but I do have a, I made a girl angry at me story. Um, so it was high school. And um, I, I did student government. I was the MC at the pep rallies. And I had a partner because they wanted a boy and a girl for equality and Title IX and all that good stuff. Um, <laughs> And and it was the, it was the pep rally was on April Fool's Day, so I I was like I want to pull a prank on my partner for April Fool's Day, and I thought about what to do. I was like, well, prom's coming up, oh. and she has a boyfriend. They've been going out for like three years now. She's probably going with him. I'll just pretend to ask her to prom in front of the whole school, and, and then she'll be like, what, I have a boyfriend, why are you asking me? I'll be like, ah, oh, April Fool's will be a dumb thing, this is cool. It wasn't cool. Um, so the pep rally's there, and I wait for a dull moment, and then I, well, no dull moment, because I'm a good MC, but uh, uh, a transition moment, and I went and I said, hey, Haley, and I got down on one knee. And I was like, will you go to prom with me? And her face lit up in excitement. And my face dropped in horror. And she said, yes! Yes, I will! That's, oh, that's great. And I was like, what the crap? And I said, well, guess what today is? to the other side of the gym. <laughs> Turns out her boyfriend was doing some charity missionary work with his church and was going to be in Africa the weekend of prom and she didn't have a date and because we were friends she thought I was being nice and taking her to the prom. She didn't talk to me for a week. <laughs> yeah, so that kind of sucked. Anyways, that's my story. Thank you. Thank you. Anyways, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna get get our energy back up because that's kind of a depressing story. Um, so let's let's let start me out. Start me out at a five. Start me out at a five. Start me out at a five. Then we'll move up to a six. Oh, holy crap! Then we'll move up to a seven. tonight here at Laugh Out Loud. It's called Casanova, and I need all of the players to the front. So in the game of Casanova, what's going to happen is this. We're going to get a profession, an object, a suggestion from you, the audience, and our Casanovas here, our cast of Casanovas, who have alliteration. Um, a Casanova is a, a typically male person, individual, who is good with the ladies and picking them up at uh, nightclubs, bars, um, cookies and milk, social functions for those of you who are Mormon. Um, and, and, do we? Wow, okay, well, that's awesome. Um, and they're going to come up with some pickup lines around your suggestion. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> that, that guy thinks it's really funny. That's awesome. All right, so I need a suggestion from you. Give me an occupation. Dentist. Dentist. A dentist. Dentist. Players, whenever you are ready, go ahead and take the floor. Girl, you don't need braces because you are fine. Oh. Girl, I need you to fill my cavity in my heart. <laughs> I can't feel my face when I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's get another occupation. Therapist! Therapist! So, tell me about my future in-laws. I mean, your parents! <laughs> and how do I make you feel? <laughs> Event. Birthday. Death of a cat. Birthday. Yeah, that's very specific. Let's go with birthday. 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 Hey girl, I just turned 16. Wanna go see the new James Bond movie? I'm your present. make a sound in the scene, our audience volunteers are going to have to supply over the microphones, and they will become master sound crafters, which is an Oscar category, best master sound crafter, um, and so be on the lookout for that. I think, um, I think Mrs. Jenkins, my fifth grade teacher, is, is in it for her role of scratching nails on a chalkboard, um, so... I know celebrities. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? We need a suggestion. I was gonna get to that. Give me a suggest a location where there's a lot of commotion, a lot of things, a lot of a lot of stuff going on. Give me, give me, give me from this side of the audience. Airport. Airport. Uh, give me from this side. Station. Um, 
real quick, we're gonna do we're gonna do a kitchen, but not your kitchen at home, like a master chef's kitchen. Mas like like a, a, a like like you are in the middle of the lunch rush kitchen, and I need to give you my microphone so that you can make sound effects. Players, are you ready? Yes. Audience volunteers, are you ready? Yes. All right. You. Uh, excuse me, the waiter's not taking the order. Can you help me right now? Yeah, sure. Just let me chop up this fish real quick. <laughs> There's also a helicopter passing over there. <laughs> I figured out we are at the penthouse uh, restaurant right now. Look, I, I'm just really hungry and my date's not showing up yet. I need, I need food right now. Oh, rumble, just... rumble, rumble, rumble. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're hungry. Yeah. Look, let me get you something, something quick. I'll toss so, these egg rolls in. Yeah, just slide it down the table. I got it. <laughs> that was a great throw. I saw it happen. They're already ready. Yeah. Here, let me get you a drink while I'm at it. Great. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need ice. I don't need ice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm she's sneezing right now. Let's probably get that shot. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, I'm very messy. <laughs> And I'm very quick. <laughs> She's coming in right now, man. I can hear the door opening. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> She's been shot! <laughs> about this, please, please, everyone, forget about this. Um, this next game is called Home Shopping Network, and I need all the players to the front. And I need two of you to get the heck out of here. Everyone say goodbye to the two Jasons, Jason Hanson and Jason Lyons. They're both named Jason, so we call Jason Lyons Lyons, because that's easy and he's got a cool last name. Um, not that Hanson is a cool last name. So, in Home Shopping Network, what's going to happen is we're going to get... Um, we're gonna get some objects with some interesting qualities from you, and uh, the two Jasons will be presenting them as if they were on a shopping channel, and the thing is, they don't know what it is. And our two teams here are going to mine what the objects are and what is weird about them, and the two Jasons will have to guess based on that mining. So, to start out, let, what's an object that you would see on like a home shopping Back channel? Back here! Smug and Okay, players, will you please review for us the objects and what they are? First thing's a waffle iron that plays the beavers. Second thing's a metal detector that is endorsed by Mr. Samuel L. Jackson. Oh, then we've got a vacuum that's a black hole, a necklace that's a horcrux, and a tea set that bites. So the second half is from Harry Potter. Yeah. All right. It's our half. There we go. Let's get our players back in here on the cap free. One, two, three, play! And big hand for them as they come in. Um, so, uh, I just remembered we have to time you, and I don't have a watch. Parker's gonna give me his phone. 
so I can head up all the ladies. No, I'm just going to do the thing. So they will have 30 seconds each. A minute? 20. 20 seconds each. That's all we do. Um, and I will tell them when to switch. Players, are you ready? Yes! Good. Man, do we have a deal for you today? I think you're green. We have a griddle. Not just a pancake maker. Uh, a breakfast. Not just any breakfast. This is, this is what we're just whipping up batter, whipping up eggs, and, and waffles. A waffle maker. We have not just any waffle maker, though. It's a waffle maker that plays music. Uh, and makes your face sweaty. <laughs> Switch! Well, welcome to the Beyonce Knowles No Bounds channel. We are we have here with fantastic products. We have not not just a letter opener, it's just not just a letter opener. Nope, it's one you can drink. It is a spoon, it is a little tea, teacup, teacup, uh, saucer, saucer and teacup, tea set. It is a tea yeah. set. But not just any tea set, no, this is only one you can buy here. It vomits on you. It's <laughs> Switch! Yeah, yeah, this waffle maker is awesome! But it models for you! And it's so, it's a stalker! It's so excited that it does concerts like Christopher Nolan? No. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Beyonce, Beyonce's waffle maker, uh, uh, Justin Bieber waffle maker. Yeah. So in this game, our players are going to act out a scene, 
And at the end, I will stop the scene, and at the end of the scene, you as the audience will vote on who you want removed from the scene. Just like the hit reality TV game, totally made up game show, Survivor, um, you will pick who you want to vote off of the island, the stage, the jury, the... I don't know, I haven't watched Survivor in a while. Anyways, they're gonna act out a scene, you'll vote them out, they'll do the scene again. Um, let's get a suggestion then to start off this scene. Give me an object that your grandma would give you for your birthday, but you wouldn't be all too excited about a chalice. it. A chalice. chalice. A chalice. I would be excited for that, but I mean, maybe your grandma's weird and is like just giving you chalices every day. Chalice. I got you. Players, are you ready? Yes. 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 Doctor, you have to help. She was drinking out of her chalice oh, and she got to choke and she chose poorly. <laughs> Josh, we've got one, two, three, and four. Yell out the number of the player that you want out. Yeah. I'm hearing two! Sorry, Doug. Sorry. Everyone say goodbye to Doug. And we will see this scene again. Players, are you ready? Yes! <laughs> Doctor, you gotta help me. My boyfriend made me drink from an awful chalice. What? You should break up with him. <laughs> I need to be cured. I'm dying. Oh, that would make sense. Here. Drink this. Now lay down because I had a vision of you doing that in a past life. Now eat this. Now I will never speak of this again. <laughs> Not so fast. Wait, <laughs> <Okay>, doctor. <laughs> Josh, one, two, and three. Who do you want out? Yeah. It's a unanimous two. Unanimous. They can do it. Players, are you ready? Yes. Hey, Doc. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm just a head. <laughs> Here. Um, 
Right, right over here. We're going to get the stage set up a little bit. What's your name, my friend? Logan. Logan. Everyone give a big hand for Logan. We're really happy. Thank you for always here. Um, and I'm crazy to introduce this situation. Um, Logan, where are you from? Moapa Valley, Nevada. All right. Anyone else in Nevada out there? All right. We got two people. And um, what's, your, uh, what's your Facebook relationship status? Single! Yeah! All right. And uh, what, what is it that you look for in, in, in a relationship? Uh, she's got to be female. Female. <laughs> well, we've got good news for you, bucko. This game is called Super Happy Surprise Prize Dating Game. And Logan is our lucky bachelor for the evening. We have three lovely bachelorette. Yes, um, and we also have some prizes that you guys should have done, so freaking do the prizes, gosh dang it. Logan, don't look back here, you're not supposed to know. Give him, give him that. And some of these, too. You're an incredible shot. Yeah, I know. So, in, in the classic mode of, super ha of this dating game, we have three eligible people um, we're just waiting for Logan to take them out, and he's going to ask them questions, and then he will decide who is the winner, and you'll get a prize based on who you pick. So, no peeking. And let's go ahead and meet our contestants. Contestant number one. Hello. My name is Deborah Bernstein. Your friendly neighborhood TSA agent. Rawr. All right, let's give it up for contestant number one. Hello, my name is contestant number two, because I was told we weren't supposed to say our names. Stop it. But you know what? I don't care, because I live by myself in a tree. His name is Big Red, and he's the last surviving redbird in the Utah Valley, and I love him! Let's give it up for contestant number two! And contestant number three. Hello, I am contestant number three. I am a robot. I have been programmed to learn what it means to feel human emotion, and I have been learning for the humans for 90 nanocycles. Thank you. All right, let's give it up for contestant number three. Now, Logan, you have the opportunity to ask each of our contestants a question and then a question for all of them. So, if you need help, we can go to the audience, but do you have a question for one of the contestants? Contestant number two. What is your favorite type of bird mating call? <laughs> Alright, how do you feel about animals and mating calls and, and birds? Contestant number two. Well, if you knew anything, you would know that they're all special for different reasons. <laughs> I mean, the African polywarbler is probably my favorite. He kind of just sounds like he's humming and then gets shot. <laughs> 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 How about another question for one of our contestants? Uh, so contestant number three, uh, pretty much my only stipulation was you had to be female. Uh, do you quite qualify for that? Contestant <laughs> number three, how about it? Question on females. Now loading. <laughs> According to my research, the female is the, man, is the type of the species that knows how to dance. <laughs> and believe me, I can cut the rug. <laughs> I learned that from a youth dance. <laughs> That's successfully answered. Thank you. All right, this is number three. All right, Logan, what's your next question? Audience, give me help for number one here. All right. Take off the shoes and you go to our car. Um, how about just a general question that's very, very specific? <laughs> how do you feel about travel? Uh, traveling, yeah. How do you feel about travel? Contestant number one. I love to travel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once you cross through that line, you're technically in international waters, <laughs> even though you're on land. <laughs> Sometimes when you're mid-air in the plane, 
you just can't help but feel the burning passion with me. So naturally, we'd have the co-pilot come back and marry us. <laughs> feel good about that. There's something so exciting about polyester. <laughs> yeah, let's give it up for this number one. Do you need help from the audience, or do you have one? <laughs> I'm quite an item. What's the best you can offer me here? What's your, what's your greatest strength, I guess? All right. What is your greatest strength? What do you bring to the table as a mate? <laughs> or platonic friendship, if that's how that goes. Looks like contestant number two, two honey. has an answer, all right. Yeah, well, thanks, answer. great idea. <laughs> well, as I would have to practice with you a whole lot, I'm really good at patience, right? Sometimes people just don't understand that a tree is a tree and it should stay there! Everyone comes and tries to cut down my tree and I like sitting in my tree and so I just sit in my tree and they haven't been back in at least, what is it? February, at least a month. But I know they want him. They want my big red. Who wouldn't? So yeah, patience, honey. Learn it. Contestant number two. All right, contestant number three has an answer for us. What are your greatest strengths? It's a question that many people are answered on a regular basis. I will be happy to comply. I am very good at multitasking. I work well with other people. And I feel like I bring a lot to the work environment. I am very obedient and a fast learner. And I feel that I would be a very positive asset for your company. Job, job successfully acquired. Thank you. Contest number three. I like to think I bring a lot to the table. <laughs> Sometimes, for fun, I like to send myself through the x-ray machine. <laughs> and it's incredible the things that you'll find inside yourself. <laughs> Confidence, beauty, these are all things you can see with an x-ray machine. <laughs> but really, you just have to remember that sometimes when you come up to that square and they ask you for your passport, I can check yes or no and I will always approve you. <laughs> Contestant number one. Okay. All right, Logan, now that you've heard from our contestants, who is the winner? Well, you, uh, you know I love a woman who travels, and uh, I love a, a woman who has a hot accent, so uh, I'm gonna go with number one, as long as we can have sky blue for our wedding colors. All right, number one, go ahead and step on out, and you can meet who it is that you're going to be with, and more importantly, the prize that you've won, a four pound, I don't think it's four pound, but a giant bag of Sour Patch Kids. Let's give it up for Logan, and let's give it up for all Meanwhile, elsewhere, and I need all our players to the front. <laughs> now, how many of you are just giant fans of the Marvel Cinematic Universe? I know I am. <laughs> yeah, Spider-Man: Homecoming is. Yeah. 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 
and away will they. So, in this game, our players are going to be in different locations, kind of performing scenes that seem unrelated, and gradually they will come together just like Thor, Iron Man, Captain America, and Spider-Man came together to form the Avengers. And uh, one by and little by little, the scene will come together and all the loose ends will be just absolved. Um, let's get a suggestion then from you, the audience. Give me a location that uh, uh, a fantastical location, a uh, kind of mythical uh, space station, space station, space station. Players, are you ready? Yes! We've been drifting alone out here in this escape pod for seven days. You're starting to look real good. Yeah. Oh, that visor. Oh, 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 man. Oh, man. Oh. The big problem is we're going to run out of air. Um, and I don't want you to be the last person I ever see. Meanwhile, back at the, the, the other, the real space station. Oh. <laughs> what are we gonna do? We just have too much oxygen! <laughs> you know, I've never experienced a surplus in space. We could die! If only there were more mouths. <laughs> Wait a second. There's something on the radar. Looks like another ship. No, it's... It's too small to be a ship. It's like a, spa, a small moon. It's like a, a meanwhile, meanwhile, at the element warehouse... <laughs> Just keep cranking out that oxygen. Where'd you, where'd you put the last shipment of oxygen? Tell me! Uh, I thought it was going on the rocket. The rocket? You put it on the rocket?! Yeah, it went to the space station. What?! There's too much oxygen in there already! That was the escape pod! <laughs> meanwhile, back in the escape pod! <laughs> I found this flower. It will photosynthesize and give us oxygen. Oh man, I'm gonna take it for my next run when I'm gonna run and like breathe extra much when I'm on this treadmill here. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the space station. <laughs> 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 All right, just wait, get them in the tractor beam and hope they don't think they're under attack. Oh, this is like Crane. <laughs> wait a second. We just activated the escape hatch. Now all of our oxygen is leaving. <laughs> Oh good, we have another shipment coming. <laughs> Let's grab the oxygen, it's right there! Do you see it? Meanwhile, I'm back in the space station! What do you mean you blew up the oxygen that was out there? That was an accident. Meanwhile, back in the own warehouse. Oh, splitting atoms makes them explode. I'll distribute. Oh, I thought we were just gonna shoot it up there and split. Crap. Crap. <laughs> well, back in the escape pod. Happy Fourth of July, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, just inside of the escape pod. <laughs> Where'd you get popcorn? We've run out of oxygen in our ship. Can we use yours? I think we're in the tiny room. We have flour. <laughs> oh, that works. <laughs> we just buy the guys from the element warehouse over too. Meanwhile, oh, in the element warehouse. <laughs> Dude, I don't want to go to the next one. Folks, fun fact, that's how science works. <laughs> you learn it how science. Hey everybody! It's my turn! Well, we hope you've had a good time tonight. Have you had a good time tonight? Uh, we can't do these shows without you. Thank you very much for coming out. Our last game is called Oscar Winning Moment, and for this game I need Jason Lyons and Parker players to the front. Now, as you know, the Oscars are coming up. The best picture, uh, ever, you're either you know, split down the line, it's either going to be La La Land or La La Land is just terrible. It's one or the other, it's not anywhere in between. Um, but we're going to do, not La La Land, but uh, an original scene from an original film that you guys are going to give me the made up title to. And at random times, our players will perform the monologue the moment that will win them the Oscar for Best Picture, Best Actor, whatever it may be. Costuming. Uh, that's really not Watch, I have a jacket that zips down. Whoa. 
And the nominees are Jason Hansen for Jacket That Sips Down. Oh, my shit buttons. No one cares. <laughs> so, let me get from you a made-up movie title that you think would win the Oscar. My spleen is splendid. My spleen <laughs> is splendid. What? My spleen is splendid. My spleen is splendid. Okay, fine. Whatever, I'll make it up. Players, are you ready? Yes! So many years I've been searching, as the prophecy has declared, for the spleen-shaped birthmark for the child of the prophecy. If only... Sir. Yes? I just couldn't help but notice that you were shirtless. And that you happened to have a spleen-shaped birthmark. Oh, that old thing? Oh. Um, I got it when a witch cursed me when I was five. <laughs> Parker, Oscar winning moment. Yes, I was in the dark, in the forest, wandering alone. My parents were abandoned because this is a fairy tale. And then I saw an old hot in the wood. The smoke in the air, the sick of the light, and I snuck up. Super sneaky back then. And I was snuck in there because I was really hungry. And it smelled pretty good. I went over there and I ate all the gingerbread in there. There wasn't that much, but there was a lot of cookie dough as well, and I ate all that too. The witch was making the best cookies for the king. But, but I ate it, and she was angry. And she came to me, and she said, because of that, I will make a slightly unperfected blemish on your side, and you'll have to live with that. <laughs>